Yo, what's going on snipers and welcome back to our Detroit Reverence franchise mode here in NHL 21. So in last episode we had free agency and we started up the season simulation and our team is off to one of the worst starts we've probably ever had. 14-24-3 and yeah it looks like we are definitely not going to be a playoff team this year because we are allowing way too many goals as you can see with that one game against Vegas losing 10-2. A lot of our team is minus. Also, we have a very terrible power play and a very terrible penalty kill. Now, I did make some adjustments at the end of last episode, but both those special team units have been very bad, like probably the worst I've ever seen. And yeah, we're not scoring enough goals. We're not allowing, or we're allowing too much goals. Our power play is clicking at 7.4%, which is like almost like half as much as the next worst team in the NHL. And then our penalty kill is clicking at 73.8%, which is also terrible. So definitely our special teams need to improve. We are one of the best teams in scoring shorthanded goals for in the entire league. But we just, we can't play on the penalty kill. Like we don't play a defense. We try and go for goals, it seems like. So we aren't going to probably make any trades in this episode. We're just probably going to sim out the rest of the season and just see how this team plays out. Because the first overall pick this year is a franchise level power forward which would really help us out if we could get him. So I think I'm just going to keep the team together and hopefully we could start tanking and get this guy. And if we can tank and get this guy, this guy will definitely help us out this upcoming next season, I think, a lot. Because we don't really have a goal score that we've ever drafted that's been that good. So, But yeah, let's sim up the rest of the season and get this done with, see what happens, see how bad we finish. We probably will be like a bottom five team or something like that. But hopefully this team just doesn't all of a sudden turn around in the second half. Like, I mean, I wouldn't mind if we still made the playoffs, obviously. But if we get the first overall pick, I can't complain either. So let's go to February the 1st and see how this team simulates with those little line adjustments we made to the penalty kill and power play. We get back-to-back -back losses, three straight losses. There's a win, though. And more losses, which is always nice, especially when we are trying to go for a first overall pick here. Then again, if we have the best odds to get the first overall pick, there's a good chance we're not going to actually get the first overall pick. So we probably want to actually win some games. We have 36 points, which is the worst in the NHL now, tied with the New Jersey Devils, who have been bottom feeders for like the last few years. We actually have a game against them currently. I'm really surprised Matthews is still almost point per game on a team like this. Hmm. But yeah, we're definitely not making the playoffs this year. Let's just continue to simulate. This might be a little bit of a short episode because I'm trying to get the season done as fast as possible, but it's also because my voice has been literally dying on me the last like while by a while because I've recorded now like 14 videos in the span of 24 hours, which is way too much. But I need to get this all pre-recorded stuff. You guys are probably seeing this like sometime in August. I'm assuming. Yeah, you guys are maybe seeing this near the end of August. So we're now 20, 36, and 3, so we won a couple games that month, so good on team to win a couple games, at least 46 points, which has us still in the basement, actually the worst team in the NHL now, tied with the Columbus Blue Jackets. Looks like New Jersey had a really good month, apparently. Hmm. And Dingman's got 55 points in 62 games. Not too bad, okay. Yeah, I honestly don't know if we're going to make any trades at this deadline. Because I don't really want to trade away any of our players on our team. Because I would rather them retire with us. So we will just go in as a conservative seller. And just see what's around there. But I'm probably not going to make any trades to be honest. Yeah I honestly don't think we're going to make a trade. Because I honestly would rather guys like Caden Matthews and Caden Dingman retire with this team. Than flip them away even if they have high trade values. Obviously Samson and DK are big pieces for this future team. Uh, Pow is another team uh, player I don't really want to move out from. So yeah, it just doesn't really make sense for us to make any trades, I don't think. And then like the guys that I could move, like Savin, Stewart should retire here technically. He's probably got really low trade value. So just, yeah, it doesn't really make sense for us to move anything. Stewart's dropping in morale as well again. I don't know why he keeps complaining. And then goalie-wise, obviously I don't really want to trade away any of these goalies either. So I think we're not going to make any trades. But hopefully this team gets the first overall pick for the draft this upcoming season or offseason. Because we definitely could use it for the last few years. So no trades. And yeah, let's just decline that. 
Okay, so 20, 36, and 6. And yeah, we still have 20 more games left in the season. So the most wins we can get is 40 wins. So we can't even finish Burnley above 500 if you can include the OT losses. Uh, this is going to be a tough season to see how bad we finish, but hopefully we get that first overall pick because if we miss it again, I'm going to be kind of pissed off because we've had a chance to get the first overall pick before, but we didn't. And then instead we got uh, Dika, who was fourth overall, which is not a bad pick still, but we could have had a franchise-level player that went to Toronto instead, and he's been crazy good. Let's go to the 15th, see how we do. But hopefully this team doesn't necessarily finish with the best odds to get the first overall pick. But hopefully they finish like uh, enough with enough points to uh, maybe get us that first overall pick. Injured knee to Andrew Garrison. Man, a lot of players have gotten injured with knee injuries this year too. though, Because we had some at the beginning of the year, I'm pretty sure. We're now 23-38-9. Let's go to the 30th. I'm pretty much blast through to this season, but it doesn't really matter that much because we're close to the end. Garrison's back. Alexandra is also losing morale because of ice time, it looks like. No, failing to make the playoffs. So we've already clinched not making the playoffs, which is great. Considering we're going for that first overall pick. Hopefully the team doesn't uh, want to all be traded or something. 24, 44, and 9. We got five games left. We almost could crack 50 losses, which is crazy. This is definitely one of our worst years yet. Definitely a tough year to watch. We get two wins there, three wins in a row, which hopefully gives us some lottery help. And our last game of the season is going to be a loss. So we finished 27, 46, and 9. A very bad season, and we finish with the tied for the third worst record, I think. We'll have to figure that out afterwards. But we do not make the playoffs, which is kind of good for that chance to get that first overall pick. I really hope we could get this dude. Because we definitely could use him. Because him on a top line with Dingman, Matthews, he would be able to produce on a really good level, I think, for the last few seasons of this franchise mode. So other than that, we'd probably get stuck with like getting Ness or a defenseman again. Or another left winger which we don't really know anything about, so it's kind of risky, but really hoping to get Persuade. So, let's take a look at our player stats and team stats for the season, and then we will sim up to the draft and stuff like that already, just find out, like, the retirements. Another probably pretty short episode for this one, but it's more just because I'm trying to get my voice not to get completely, like, flatlined by the end of all this recording, so. But let's take a look at our player stats, see who did what, so... Center-wise, Matthews had 73 points, so down by like 20 points from last year. Yeah, 20 points from last year. Obviously, last year we made the playoffs, but yeah, that pretty much happened. He's almost had 1,000 points in his career, so that's pretty nice to see. And he is signed still for one more season with us, so. Pau is 64 points. That's a pretty good season from Phil Pau. I think it might be. Yeah, it's a career high from him. That's great to see. Belanger, 49 points. Vishnovsky had 23 points since getting thrown into the lineup because we decided to scratch Calvin Hobbs, who's now losing morale as well. He might be let go of at the end of the season because he's somebody I wouldn't mind letting go of. Uh, but Vishnovsky was really good being in the lineup 18 goals in 41 games. So I think we definitely got to let go of Hobbs. Uh, Schumacher's first season was pretty good. 15 goals and 21 points. Blood off 18 points in a minus 30. Yikes. So Bloodoff probably leaves as well, even though he's a good face-off man. Savonin managed to hit to 31 goals, so he actually hit 30 goals this year. 60 points, so a lot less points than he's normally used to scoring. But he's now at 875 career goals in 1,657 career points, which is really good. So, yeah, he's continuing to have a really legendary like career. And yeah, his potential has dropped down to a top 9, so he might retire at the end of this year. Uh, Dika, 23 goals and 49 points. Uh, a little less points than last year and a little less goals than the last two seasons, but uh, still not a terrible player. But he's only he's 22 now, and he still hasn't really produced or developed that well, I'd say. Right wing-wise, Garrison, 69 points. That's a pretty good season from him, and he's also a plus 15 on a team that would finish this bad, so props to that. That was actually almost a career high in points from him, too. Dingman, 64 points, minus 18 
And then Sealfito, 33 points is pretty solid, plus 4. Barker was a minus 23 and had 22 points. And 3 points in 4 games from Alexandrov, who's also dropping due to ice time. Defensively, Biggs had 34 points in a minus 13. Lilia, 15 points in a minus 20. Hardik kind of 13 points. Samson, 13 points. Stewart was a minus 6. Only the second time he's been minus in a long time. And he had 10 points. Stapleton had 5 points in 75 games and was a minus 18. And an Orr had 1 goal in 7 games. As for goaltending, they were both terrible. And that's pretty much that. Both of them got a shutout, but both of them had really bad save percentages and goals against. But then again, we were one of the worst teams in the league. Entire league-wise for points, let's take a look at that. So Gunnarsson for Boston led with 121 points, followed by Noah Evans, who won the Stanley Cup last year, and Timo Valahadi, who is that franchise guy that we missed out on in the Diga draft. And the most goals this year is Kristoff Schmidt with 61 goals, followed by Harold Ho in Vegas who was also tied with Kukinen, Rintoul, and McCauley with 56 points. This Kukinen guy is also really insane. Over 1,100 points already. As for defensemen, most points this year was Mika Yolonen again with 93 points, so Philadelphia might go back-to-back -back this year. Hmm. And best goalie this year for wins was Justin Schrader in Boston with 44 Best save percentage by a starter was Castles with a 9-11 save percentage. And best goals against by a starter was Castles as well with a 2.7. Hmm. Interesting. Now let's take a look. Actually, I have to roar. Now we'll take a look at these standings, yeah. Let's see, where did we finish in terms of the entire league? Philadelphia won the Presence Trophy. Both them in uh, Dallas had the exact same record, but uh, Philadelphia had one more ROW. So they end up winning the Presence Trophy. So that's interesting. Let's take a look. Were we in the bottom five more than likely? Yep, we were the fourth worst team in the NHL. Tied actually in points with the Calgary Flames. Tied with the Calgary Flames with 63 points. And then Minnesota and Columbus were both below us with 62 points. So these last, uh, let's see, six teams in the NHL were all separated by two points. So... I don't know who's going to end up winning the draft lottery, but hopefully it is us out of these six teams. And then in terms of other stuff like goals for and that, we scored 2.87 goals per game, which was the worst in the NHL, so we were not a good offensive team this year, probably due to the like uh, downfall of guys like Savonin and whatnot, I would assume. Goals against per game, we were not actually one of the worst defensive teams. Well, actually kind of, but we were still like 21st in terms of goals against. So if our offense would have been better and we would have maybe kept the puck out a little bit more, we could have actually maybe made the playoffs and maybe won more games. Power play percentage, our power play improved drastically since the last uh, episode ended, but uh, still one of the, it was the worst in the league at 14.2%. So it went up by 7%, but still the worst in the NHL. And our penalty kill percentage was still one of the worst as well, 75.3%. And we scored eight shorthanded goals this year, which was one of the most in the NHL, but we had one of the worst penalty kills. Interesting. And we we're a better road team than home team. Hmm. Interesting. Weird year for this team for sure. Hopefully we get that first overall pick though, because if we don't, I'm going to be a little frustrated. It really sucks that we've only won the one Stanley Cup though in this franchise mode. Okay, let's start simming up to the draft to find out who wins the Stanley Cup in the awards for the season. And then like I said, we will also uh, take a look at the draft class and see the draft lottery results, retirements, and finish up this season. Who is going to win the Stanley Cup? Uh, so Tampa fires their head coach in the middle of the playoffs, which is interesting. The Stanley Cup champions are going to be the Edmonton Oilers and Cleveland wins the AHL. So Edmonton, I think, went to the finals last year and lost to Philadelphia. And now they win the Stanley Cup this year. Probably their first one since Connor McDavid was with the Oilers, I would assume. Let's take a look at those awards. So Edmonton wins the Stanley Cup. Philadelphia won the President's Trophy. And yeah, it was Edmonton and the Islanders in the Stanley Cup Finals. Okay. 
So Edmonton, we're kind of going back to like to 1980s style because Edmonton played the Flyers last year. This year they played the Islanders in the Cup Finals. So that is really weird. In terms of individual awards, Gunnarsson's going to win the Art Ross and the Hart. Yelonen wins his second Norris in a row. Delmas wins the Bing for Dallas. Helms wins the Calder for Dallas. Lovejoy wins the Colin Smythe. Castles wins the Vesna. He also wins the Jennings. Packard wins his second straight Bill Masterton. Vigetti for Vancouver wins the Jack Adams. Ponomero for Vancouver wins the Selkie. Gunnarsson wins the Lindsay. And Schmidt wins the Maurice Richard. Hmm. And then in terms of the AHL, I don't think we probably have any awards. Yeah, we do not have any awards in the AHL. Huh. So weird season. Let me just take a look at the AHL team. How do they do? Seems like they're trending backwards a bit as well. Hmm. Interesting. Let's continue to simulate, I guess. Actually, let's take a look at that Stanley Cup winning Edmonton Oilers team first because we didn't do that yet. want to kind of see who's on the roster, if there's any former players of ours. Because there could potentially be. So they have Guillermo Lovejoy. I recognize that name. Oh, yeah, from Florida. I remember playing him against Florida in the playoffs. They have Lundberg and Rayoff. Yeah, they have a pretty good team. No former players so far that I could see. Yeah, I think that's it. No former players. Hmm. They do have a guy named Rory Champion, so that's probably why they won, because they have a champion guy on their team. And there's their goalies, Eric Malone and Kyle Elbert. Hmm. Interesting team. Now, the moment of truth. We get to find out the draft lottery results and all that to see if we get that first overall pick in that franchise level power forward. If we don't, it's going to be su it's gonna suck a lot. If we can somehow move up from like 2 to number 1, we might try and do so. But uh, I really hope we get this guy. Come on, Sim Engine, please. No, we're not going to get first overall and we fall from 4 to 6. And you're going to give LA the uh, first overall pick from number 11. I hate the Sim Engine so much. It does not make sense. Because it, it's a very slim odds for an 11th overall team to go all the way up to number 1. Especially when it was a traded pick too. Seriously? And then you get teams like Arizona who move from 8 to 2. But that happens so much in the Sim Engine that it is completely unrealistic. And then the first three teams that should have technically had picks move back. Uh, 6 overall. We're not even going to get a, probably a franchise or, me, or elite player even at that stage. Like I mean we could try and move up but I don't really like doing that. So retirement wise though, Damon Pete retires, that's a really good player for San Jose. Way over point per game as well, 762 goals. It looks like we didn't lose Savonin again, which is really surprising. Um, but to get the retires, Ola Olsen, a really good player as well there. Yeah, this was a really good retirement class, but we do not lose uh, Savonin, which is interesting. I might still bring him back to play on like a third line type of role. What else we got here? Any former players of ours? Dylan Nolan retires. Interesting. We had him for a little bit. Any other former players of ours that I remember at least? But yeah, I'm kind of surprised that Savonin didn't retire. Hmm. I think we had Terrence Brennan for a little bit, like one season, didn't we? I remember that nice name. No, he didn't. Hmm. I don't know why I recognize his name. Maybe we played him in the playoffs. Uh, we definitely had Sylvain Rayom for a little bit. Hmm, he actually won the Stanley Cup with Edmonton. I didn't even realize him on the roster, but yeah, he was on the roster. We had him for a tiny, tiny bit. Anybody else interesting? We had Convoy for a bit, I'm pretty sure as well. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the Convoy I had. Yeah, 82 games with us. And that is pretty much that for retirement. So we did not lose anybody to retirement. Which I mean is great. But at the same time we need to make some decisions with some of the older dudes. But Christopher Kreutzer, this guy. Yeah, he went after uh, Tristan Molded in the draft and he retires a year later. Hmm. Interesting. Best goalie to retire this year is Isaiah Curtis who we had for a little bit. He was in Ottawa for like 
a long time. But uh, yeah, we had him, I think, for a bit, didn't we? Yeah, we had him for one year in 2031-32. Devin retires, Olanen, Blanchard, Knight. Hmm, not even a lot of former players retired for us, so that's kind of neat. But yeah, we did not lose a single player. So that is good. And what else we got here? We do lose Hugo gervais Trinard, who I mean, I think is one of our assistant coaches. I don't think that's our head coach. And that's that. And we do also lose another scout. Interesting. Let's take a look at the draft class quickly again. Just to see what we could get with our sixth overall pick. We can get an elite player if the computer decides to go for the high top four defenseman. Brett Reardon, who's a playmaker. I mean, it's not a bad player. But I really would rather have preferred this franchise level player. But he's going to go to the Los Angeles Kings. And there's Stokes. Ness. Yeah, I think we got to go with uh, Brett Reardon in a draft if we have the chance. Hopefully we don't have to get Caden Robertson because that's not a great pick for a 6th overall pick. Being a high top 4 defenseman. Is this guy NHL ready though? No he's not. He's 3 years away too. Yikes. And then there's Go... Okay. Abel looks pretty good too for a top 6 forward sniper. Maybe that's something we want to go for but I don't really know if we need any more snipers. Hmm. And let me take a quick look at the contract situation for this offseason. So all exploring players. So Samson needs a big contract. Stewart still needs another contract. Seal Fido. Savonin. Yeah, there's some pretty big names again this offseason. And goalie-wise, Turnstrom is the only one pretty much that matters that much. So anyways, guys, that's going to do it for this episode of our Detroit Rounds franchise mode. So in next episode, we will take it to the draft and resign stage. As we look to continue to try and get this game better because we are running out of time to go for another Stanley Cup. So let me know what you guys think down below and I'll see you guys next time.